we are um, preparing our next presenter now. So we'll be welcoming Bastian from Godot. Um, he's a um, Godot XR core developer, and he will give us very good insights into um, what's being done right now to enhance um, OpenXR support in the Godot engine itself. And Bastian, uh, being from Australia, he will be uh, giving a talk remotely. Um, okay, cool. Um, thanks for having me, first of all. Hello, everyone. Um, so welcome to my talk about the uh, the Godot integration project and, and Godot in general um, and our um, experience in, in implementing OpenXR in, uh, in Godot. So just uh, quickly about myself, uh, my name is Bastian Olay. I am the, uh, the lead developer uh, for the Godot game engine. Um, I originally uh, introduced um, XR support in Godot, so, uh, so I got the, uh, the ball rolling many years ago. Uh, but today I, uh, I guide a small team of mostly volunteer contributors working on XR support in the engine. Um, I'm also a, a member of the Godot Foundation board, um, and the Godot Foundation is an organization that is basically overseeing the work that is done on uh, on the Godot game engine. Uh, I'm also from Sydney, Australia, which is why uh, why I'm coming to you guys uh, remotely today. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, hopefully that will work fine. So just to give uh, a little bit of information about the Godot engine itself. Um, Godot is a relatively new player in the market. Um, it was originally created by Juan Lewinsky and Ariel Monsur, uh, and they decided to open source the engine about 10 years ago. So Godot is a fully open sourced game engine, and it's released under a very permissive MIT license. Um, in our latest release that we just uh, brought out, which is Godot 4.3, we had well over 500 contributors submitting changes. Uh, and we had a total of 3,500 commits in that release. So uh, yeah, that's that's quite a, a mountain of work. Um, and we're currently ranked as one of the most popular open source game engines on GitHub, both by stars and by contribu uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> contributions. Um, I'm not a native English speaker. I'm sorry if I stumble over my words once in a while. Um, the other thing which is really interesting here is that in the recently held uh, 2024 GMTK Game Jam, we uh, represented about 37% of submissions, and that was up from 90% in the previous year. So you know, we can see that there's quite some growth in um, in users in Godot. Um, yeah, and, and we expect quite a lot of interesting things to, uh, to come out soon as a result. Um, just to give a little bit of an overview of what sort of things are being made by Godot. So this is a, uh, a quick overview of um, popular games that are already released with the Godot engine. Many of the games that you see here are actually released with the previous version of Godot, Godot 3.0 or 3.x, I should say. Um, so yeah, that's uh, um, some of these are doing doing quite well. There's, it's, uh, there's quite a nice little collection of games there. From this list that we see here, uh, Endoparasitic is the only one that also has a VR version. Um, and it's worth checking out. It's a very unique um, VR game. So worth mentioning. When we're looking at what is uh, coming soon, these are a couple of examples of games that we know about that are being worked on. Uh, PVKK and Road to Vostok are two really good examples of um, games that are currently being made with the current version of Godot. And you can see that the uh, the graphics uh, abilities of Godot has made quite a leap forward compared to the last version. Uh, we're also pretty uh, proud to name Slate Aspire as one of the games that, that that we are expecting in the near future. But we're here for XR. So um, as far as XR support is concerned, uh, we well, I started work on XR early in 2017. Uh, Godot 3.0 was the first version uh, released in January 2018 that officially supported VR. Um, back then, through OpenVR and Oculus Desktop, uh, Godot's been a fairly early adopter of OpenXR, uh, with the Moda, Monado runtime being shown working together with Godot all the way back in 2019, I, I think, I believe, through another Kronos event. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, they were they were showing it off, and it was really cool, and, and yeah, it's been evolving ever since. Uh, today, OpenXR support is implemented into the core of Godot, and uh, it just works out of the box, um, which is, yeah, something that... Uh, um, we think it's pretty cool. Uh, we've also got WebXR support in the core, which is one of the other um, uh, XR API, APIs that uh, that's what we used. So um, the EDA of Godot uh, feels equally at home on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So 
we support all the basic uh, or the, all the big uh, desktop platforms. Uh, but the editor actually also runs on Android tablets. And we have an early alpha version currently available where we're even running the editor inside of XR headsets. Uh, and you can thus mean make uh, normal games, but also XR games within the headset and test them within the headset. Which is uh, which is a quite uh, an interesting new little feature that uh, that we're uh, we're about to release. Um, Godot runs on all OpenXR devices, with the exception of Hololens. And the only reason that Hololens is excluded is because of Hololens requirements for DirectX and UWP support. Now, DirectX support has been added to Godot fairly recently, but we still need to do a few things to make it possible to use through OpenXR. But at this point in time, there are no plans to support uh, UWP with uh, with the current version of Godot. Godot also supports XR through a number of other um, SDKs uh, through a plugin system. So both uh, OpenVR and Tilt 5 are currently supported. And uh, well, we hope that other SDKs will uh, will come available as well. But uh, obviously, OpenXR is the, uh, the big hero here. Um, that is our main focus and, uh, and the only one that... Uh, um, yeah, that really um, is growing rapidly as far as support is concerned. So uh, it is uh, uh, quite clear, Godot and Kronos, we have a, a long history together in, in, in many ways. Uh, Godot has always championed Kronos' open standards. Uh, Godot was originally an OpenGL engine. We're now a Vulkan first engine. So Vulkan is the, uh, the, um, the rendering GPU, uh, a rendering API that we are using primarily. Uh, we obviously support DirectX and, and uh, Metal nowadays. Metal is coming in the next release of, uh, of Godot, uh, but everything happens in, in Vulkan first. Um, we're obviously, you know, like I already mentioned, uh, big on OpenXR, uh, but we also uh, adopted other standards like GLTF, uh, which holds a primary place in our asset pipeline. Um, as a result, it's a logical step for Kronos and Godot to do something together. And with that, we have decided to uh, work on something through the OpenXR working group called the Godot Integration Project. And that's a project that's allowed Kronos to um, uh, invest in a way uh, or pay for uh, development being done in Godot that also benefits the working group. So there's a, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to mention about that whole project. Um, First thing is with OpenXR being an open standard, it becomes important that we also have open implementations of that standard so that that um, promotes the adoption of the standard. Uh, Kronos itself has obviously already in the past invested heavily in, in the Monado runtime to have that done on the runtime side. So there we have a, a completely open implementation that other runtimes and other vendors can look at and see, okay, um, how do I approach all these different APIs that are uh, in Kronos. But on the game side, we are lacking in that sort of example. So we do have uh, a, a Hello World type of, or I think it's called LOXR type of example application. Um, and there is a, a whole nice tutorial system uh, or uh, series online, but a full game engine implementation that handles all the different APIs that are available on in OpenXR you know, that is really something that, that other um, OpenXR developers really look at uh, when they are implementing OpenXR on the game engine. You really need to look at finding examples and knowing how to actually use the APIs. And Open uh, or, and Godot can fulfill that, uh, um, that role here. So one of our first goals of the Godot integration project is to ensure that Godot has full coverage of all the core OpenXR functionality and, uh, and we will be targeting all the, the small holes that are in there, all the things that we haven't implemented yet as part of this, uh, this project. Now, the other um, reason here is that when we are looking at um, adding new APIs to, uh, 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 to OpenXR, there's only so much that you can do with theoretical discussions. At some point in time, you have to have something that works to test whether whether we are um, you know whether we've designed things the right way. Uh, for this reason, the working group has always required that there are a number of implementations in runtimes 
to uh, validate that the APIs are correct so that we can uh, uh, we can release them without any you know any weird holes in them or anything that we've missed. But we don't have such a thing on the game engine side. So that is, again, one of the things where Godot comes into play and where this project comes into play, where we uh, are um, opening the door to having the new APIs implemented on the game engine side so that we can see the whole solution working. And, and again, hopefully find anything that's been overlooked or anything that we've missed so that by the time that we ratify the APIs and we release the APIs, uh, that they are they are solid, that uh, um, you know that we are uh, in a good spot. Uh, now, before we go to the next slide, I do want to make a small little tangent here and uh, look at the or talk about the little picture that I've inserted here. Um, this is a little project uh, done by one of our contributors uh, called Immersive Home, or one of our users, I should say. Um, which is a complete AR or mixed reality application running on the Quest where he integrates with uh, IoT devices around his home and he can basically interact and control his whole home uh, from within um, the headset. Um, and I just wanted to point that out because it's a great example that Godot isn't just for games, but Godot actually has a number of people working on, uh, on really interesting applications um, within the XR space. Now, when we talk about the, uh, you know, implementing APIs as part of the API rectification process in Godot, that also means that we have an added bonus here, and that is that we have um, API implementations available early on at the release of the API. And that obviously helps out uh, vendors who want to implement the APIs because they immediately have an application with which to test their uh, their side of, uh, of the implementation. Uh, and we really hope that that is going to promote um, vendor adoption of new APIs that are added to the OpenXR standard. Basically, that is really everything that I wanted to quickly go through. Um, We've only just started with the Godot integration project, so uh, I don't have a lot of things to show of the things that we are building. Hopefully that will come in the uh, in the coming months. Um, and other than that, if you want to know more about Godot, um, here's, a, here's our email address and our website. Um, and obviously at the beginning of the slides, I'm, I'm think that the slides are going to be made available to everybody, uh, is my personal email address for anybody who, uh, who wants to reach out. Um, that was everything that I wanted to say. So um, floor is open for questions. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Thank you, Bastian. I think we have time for one question. So is there someone here with a question for Bastian for Godo? I will take, give you the mic. Statement. Okay, we have a statement. Oh, in incidentally, you might uh, support HoloLens uh, through the magic of open standards if you support WebXR. <laughs> Um, I, ha I unfortunately don't have access to a whole lens, but if uh, the whole lens supports WebXR, there's a really good chance that uh, Godot will indeed run on the whole lens in that way. Uh, unfortunately, not through OpenXR. That's still pretty good news. Thank you. Thank you, Bastian. Uh, big round of applause to Bastian. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next year. I will be there. <laughs>